It gets weirder every time. At least it keeps it interesting. I, I think it's just this computer. The the other one doesn't. Like, yeah, yeah, we're, yeah, good. yeah. we're good. Anyway, uh, we saw somebody say in the chat, uh, had anybody heard about the woman who went missing in Alabama uh, after calling 911 to look for a toddler? So we looked it up. And at first we were like, oh, okay, she's returned home. It's it's all normal. Mm. And then it was like, she has no memory of anything that happened between the phone call and now. And I'm like, oh. I mean, fitting for not okay. our last video, but the previous video. Yeah, I'm like, ah, you know what? Maybe uh, maybe that is up our alley a little bit. Maybe we should investigate that. Um, but, it, I mean, it looks like there's very little information actually available at the yep. moment. So every, every question that we would have had falls under the, it's still an ongoing mm. investigation and details are not yet released. Yeah, so probably no opinions on that quite yet because it would just be irresponsible to have opinions on that already. We'll get there. We'll get there eventually. It'll be fine. Who is who is texting me? See, oh. stare there. Don't they know what time it is? Don't they know it's lore time? It's lore time. Speaking of lore time, um, today's today's topic of conversation is not happy. So I just wanted to preface that uh, so everybody knows that uh, yeah, it's it's dark. Yeah. Um, it's we, some dark stuff. Do we want to ease into the dark stuff with acknowledging what today is? Oh, yeah, right. Uh, before we make all of you very sad, this is our 100th podcast episode. This is, uh, this is the, this is a weird, a weird experience to be here. I'm trying to hit pause on something else, uh, and it's not working. So give me one second. Yeah, I, uh, we started this show... In this building, actually, in a different apartment, yeah. but in this building, yeah, in a one-bedroom apartment in my living room, mm -hmm. in June of 2021, um, at the time, I was planning to go to grad school. Yep. I was planning to move across an ocean to go to grad school. At the time, I was working on a farm. He was a farmhand. He was a stable boy. Yep. Yeah. He was He was actually the, the owner's wife's, uh, you know, mistress. So to speak. Correct, yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's not true at all. No, I made that up on the spot. Close. I like to make things up about my friends. <laughs> no. Well, I did the same thing to John where I was playing uh, Xbox with mm. John and a few other people, uh, one of my buddies, and <laughs> just for no reason, everybody's like, oh, John, what do you do for uh, for work? And I was like, ah, he's in, he's in military intelligence. <laughs> totally made it up. Yep. Total BS. Yep. Not true. He goes, I'm just not. <laughs> <laughs> just... <laughs> But it's fun, you know? Yeah. It's fun to bug people like that. It's a good time. But yeah, it's it's wild to look back at that and the fact that we were basically just, you know, a couple of guys with a... We, we were using my phone as a camera. Yeah. Yeah, for that first one, yeah. My phone was a camera. We had a couple of, like, $20 mics we bought off of Amazon, and I had no clue how Streamlabs worked. <laughs> and that's where we were. And I still don't know how Streamlabs works. And... To give you guys an idea of what you being here and supporting what we have to do has has done for us, we basically worked out our, our three to five year plan this afternoon. Yeah. Um, some of the you know general stuff that involves uh, short films coming out next year, a full length feature film coming out within the next five years, yeah. starting to do like studio level stuff with intent. Like we have big plans, and that trajectory is only possible because of what you guys have done to support the show. So thank you so much for that because that's been huge for both of us. Yeah, seriously. I mean, we've 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 always had dreams of being able to be storytellers and and to do this type of thing in some way or another. Uh, but I guarantee you, if you told me when I was in film school that the way you're going to start doing that is through a folklore YouTube channel because your buddy uh, went <laughs> what, viral on TikTok yeah. for a conspiracy video. And I probably in college would have said to you, yeah, it tracks. Yeah. <laughs> it's also, do you remember what we were doing the night that video went viral and the night that I started to get followers? Well, we were going out. We were going out. And what we were celebrating. We weren't celebrating anything. But we were just going out. We were just going out, and Pat and I downed a fifth of tequila. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, because that it, it had been that big build-up. I think you went missing at one point. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. Pat and I downed a fifth of tequila and then went to Bistro. Yeah. Um, Pat there was a... got very angry with me for reasons I'm still not aware of. <laughs> we're cool now, but it was just like one of those things where I'm like, what are you mad about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then around like <laughs> one in the morning, I get a call because I had gone home around midnight. I was just tired. Yeah, because I had been I I had been at work that morning at eight thirty. So like, thank God I don't have to do that anymore. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what uh, what was your job title? I was a digital marketing specialist. There we go. Yeah, I was uh, fitting. Yep, 
You know, I'm, I was <laughs> doing digital marketing for a college housing company. Yep. Um, and uh, I get a call around 1 a.m. from Rex, uh, one of Aiden's other best friends. And Rex is like, yo, is, is Aiden at the apartment? And I went, I don't think so. And I like, got out of bed and went and checked. And I look and I'm like, no, he's not. And they're like, okay, well, we don't have him either. Do you have any idea where he would be? And I was like, dude, I have no clue. <laughs> Yeah. So I I put my like actual clothes on. I go out. They're looking for you at every bar in town. Yeah. I'm talking to the cops. I'm like, hey, if you see a guy who's about yay high, blonde hair, like, um, can can you like, his name's Aiden. Just if he seems out of it, see if anybody just like let somebody know, please. Yeah. <laughs> And then, like three hours later, I'm like, I, I come back. You just here, appeared. Like, yeah, and everybody's like, "Where you been?" I was like, "I was just out, guys." Like, <laughs> I was about walking and around. And you're like, "Where were you?" I was like, "Because uh, it was the one time I was like, I don't feel like bringing my phone with me tonight." Yeah. And then everybody <laughs> freaks out. I remember. The, I forgot the phone part. Yeah. So this is why you bring your phone places. It's not because it's about you. It's because, ironically enough, even if you think it's not going to make a difference, people will care. He almost became one of the first missing persons <laughs> cases we covered. <laughs> would have been entertaining yeah Whew. but it's just yeah i just wanted you know it's it's wild to think that like that's where we were and now we're here and we're getting ready to buy new cameras for the podcast and an actual mixing board and kind of make this a lot more professional yeah um yeah so just you know thank you guys it's Seriously. been it's been a wild ride and we're we're glad you've come along for it yeah and we're glad you're still here i mean you know we're like you said we got big plans and we're looking forward to being able to execute them mm -hmm. but yeah, it doesn't it doesn't happen if, without you guys' support. So we hope that we continue to be the people that you guys are willing and and uh, you know dedicated to support. Mm -hmm. And you know we we want to live up to what we have done so far, and we want to go beyond it. Yeah. So, so with you know with all of that said, yeah. uh, now we're gonna do something responsible and use our platform for good. Yeah. Um, which in doing that, we're about to tell you a very sad story that if you saw Friday's video, you heard. Yes. But, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll recite it for you guys before we start to, you know, go into a little bit more discussion about it. But this is, uh, this is the story of a woman named Amber Takaro, who was 20 years old when she went missing. She was from Fort McMurray, Alberta, which is about 235 miles northeast of Edmonton, Canada. Now, if you know... Uh, if you know anything about Western Canada and the Native American issues, uh, all over Canada, but specifically on the Western side, there's an area known as the Highway of Tears. The Highway of Tears is a stretch of highway, it's specifically Highway 16, heading west, east-west, um, where in since 1970... Is it, is it 16 or 14? It's 16. Okay. Um, where between 1970 and today, at least... 80 women have gone missing along that highway. Now, you might say, all right, well, that's 80 women since 1970. That's more than one woman a year mm -hmm. on one road. Granted, it's a road that goes pretty far. It's Prince George, Prince Rupert, that is the specific area known as the Highway of Tears. But that's a significant number of women to the point where you have to put up signs mm -hmm. that say, hey, don't hitchhike on this road because there's a higher than usual chance you will go missing. Yeah. Um, those signs have been put up by the RCMP. Like, so that is Canadian federal police, who, again, I, I will criticize the RCMP till the cows come home, but I, I want to give you an idea of the gravity of that. It is the Canadian federal government saying, hey, don't hitchhike on this specific road mm -hmm. because there's a problem, uh, which is a little funny considering that Canada, <laughs> the government, despite most accounts being at least 80 women, they have recognized 18 of those cases of missing women as happening along the Highway of Tears. Mm -hmm. uh, those women are overwhelmingly Native American uh, or, you know, First Nations. I know the Canadians have different terminology than we do, but that's a lot of women. That's that's a problem. And part of the reason that it's an even bigger issue is that these crimes are rarely solved. A lot of murders do get solved. A lot of people that are reported missing are found. Mm -hmm. This is dozens and dozens of women in relatively the same area for example amber takaro uh I'll, yeah i'll get to that in a minute but this is dozens and dozens of women who go missing in generally the same area and are never found the crime is never solved which means there are murderers on the loose out there mm -hmm. they might be serial killers they might be opportunistic it's hard to say 
but that's a lot of people. That's a lot of unsolved murders, and it implies a lot of people getting away with murder. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've seen some comments from people that are like, oh, well, you know, jurisdictional issues. I'm like, I get it. I, I understand the nuance here and why these cases don't often get solved, and it's not always racism. Sometimes it's bureaucratic red tape. Sometimes that the natives don't want the feds involved. Um, you know, there's there's a, I think a lot of people tend to look at these things as black and white, and it's not. There's a lot going on under the surface here. Uh, including 300 years of racial enmity because of distrust mm -hmm. between two different sides. Mm -hmm. um, so, you you know, you look at this and it's there's a lot going on. Yeah. Whether or not you're going to harp on the issues with investigation, no matter who you're going to place blame on, that's still a lot of murderers to not be accounted for as a disconcerting number of people dying. And I'm not saying that something can easily be done, but, like, What's being done is is not enough, and we'll go a little bit more into that. But to give you an idea of what happened to Amber, she kind of bounced around between women's shelters and her mom's place because, and this was a kind of a situation where she was 20 years old, single mother, trying to get on her feet. Not the same situation as somebody who might have a, a little bit more resources in their family. These are very poor people for the most part. Mm -hmm. Um so she was kind of switching back and forth. She was trying to get independence, moving out to places like, uh, what was it called, Waypoint? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. Unity House was the, the overarching group. So she would go and she would stay at a women's shelter like Unity House, and kind of the idea was try and, try and get out there, be independent, get on her feet. For whatever reason, it wouldn't work out, and she would move back in with her mom. Mm -hmm. Again, 20-year-old woman no resources. A, a lot of people were very quick in the comments on the video on Friday to say, you know, who goes to a place that, you know, provides free food, shelter, housing, and says, you know, like, oh, this isn't enough to get on my feet. It's, you got to remember that there's, there's details to things that you'll probably never know about these people. It's best to not assume things about a person's personality based on stuff like that. Mm -hmm. There are other things, other sorts of patterns you can start to look at, but this pattern really has nothing to do with her going missing. Mm -hmm. This is her just being unable to get on her feet. Yeah. Um, you can call that laziness if you want to, but the fact of the matter is it has no bearing on why she went missing she meets somebody at unity house whose name is evangeline i think i figured out who it is i have yet to confirm who it is so i'm not going to use a last name i'm sorry uh maybe somebody else is going to come out in two weeks with an article from the edmonton inquirer naming people um and then claim all of the credit for it mm. uh, <laughs> that's never happened to us before never um I know I bring that up a lot, though. Uh, so, anyway, moving swiftly along from that, she uh, she becomes friends with Evangeline, and then just a few weeks later, after she's moved out of Unity House again, Evangeline stops by uh, Vivian Tukarara's house, Tukara's house, that is uh, Amber's mother, and says, hey, Amber, you know, um, I want to take a trip down into Edmonton to go shopping. Do you want to come with me? And so Amber says, sure, I would love to. Evangeline is like, we'll get on a plane, we'll fly down, we'll stay in a motel, all that. Amber's mom, on the other hand, not keen on the whole idea. Mm -hmm. Very, you know, very cautious. This is her, her daughter. She wants her to be safe. She has a 14-month-old son named Jacob. Like, you know, m maybe don't go on the trip. Amber says, no, it's fine. You know, I'll, I'll be all right. I'm, I'm an adult. I'm responsible. And then you have... Uh, you have Vivian kind of pushing back again, being a good mom and like, okay, well, at least why don't you leave Jacob with me? You know, just in case something happens, he's safer here. No. Uh, Amber says, we're going to be gone two sleeps. Those were her words. So two nights, not, don't worry about it. Like she was trying to comfort her mother. Important things to understand. Amber's brother, I want to say Paul Takaro, uh, was in jail at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what for, but he's out now. So I assume it wasn't anything super serious. Uh, her other brother, Billy Joe Takaro, is chief of the Mi uh, Misikyu Cree nation. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's chief, he's an important man now. He wasn't back then. Mm -hmm. um, but through, through some of, partially through this experience is part of why he ended up chief. No. Um, you know, that, that, that level of like personal involvement with this kind of tragedy. So I'm also going to turn the volume up a little bit because I'm worried that we're a little too quiet, but there we go. Um, yeah. So Amber eventually convinces her mom to, I mean, she doesn't need to convince her mom to let her go. She's an adult. Flies to Edmonton. They leave, uh, Fort McMurray, Fort, Mc, Fort McMurray around 6 30 AM on August 18th. 
they, 2010. They arrive around 8 a.m. Same day. Mm -hmm. They go and they stay in a budget motel. I could not figure out which one. I just know it was near the Nisku Airport. Uh, well, it's the Edmonton Airport, which is next to Nisku. Mm -hmm. They spend most of the 18th in Edmonton shopping, according to everyone who was aware of the situation. Amber was in communication with her mother, probably telling her what they were doing. Mm -hmm. Sometime in the late afternoon, probably talking like 4 or 5 p.m., they head back to the motel. And this is where things start to get murky because Amber's mom says that they were in contact for most of the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Sometime between late afternoon and 7.30 p.m., 8 p.m., the communication stops because Amber is uh, going out for the night. Vivian, Takaro, texts to ask what's going on, can't get in touch with Amber, gets in touch with Evangeline. And Evangeline says, oh, she and Jacob are taking a nap. This is around 8 p.m. Amber is not in the motel room. Amber has left. And so the one of the big questions and the reason that I've kind of harped on the importance of Evangeline to this story is that nobody knows why Evangeline lied. Amber was not there. Evangeline knew Amber was not there. Why did she not tell Amber's mother, oh, you know, she went out to go get dinner or she, you know, has a friend who lives in Edmonton that she's going to see? Nothing. Nothing is said. Amber is incommunicado completely. Nobody hears from her. Vivian Takaro, of course, is, you know, concerned, but says like, okay, well, you know, when she wakes up, have her call me right away. The next morning, Vivian gets a text from Evangeline that says Jacob's grandma. And Vivian can immediately tell something's up. Calls back, calls Evangeline and says, you know, where's, what's going on? Where's Amber? And Evangeline says that Amber got up in the middle of the night and just left and left Jacob there, which everybody kind of said, no, um, that, that doesn't, that doesn't make sense because Amber would never leave her son behind like that. Mm. And this is where certain suggestions have made their way into the story that Amber was not there to go shopping, that she and Evangeline were there for, uh, less than legal activities to make a quick few dollars. I don't see a ton of evidence of that. There was no history of that with Amber um, that I could find at least. It just seems like she was, you know, just a normal woman. Yeah. Like trying to make her own way. Uh, Evangeline, on the other hand, there's no information about. So the idea that Evangeline could have talked her into it, sure. My guess, my belief, having researched the case, is that she did not go to Edmonton with the intention of partaking in any sort of thing like that. Mm -hmm. I think that she went to Edmonton to go shopping, and if anything did happen along those lines, it was because it was Evangeline's idea, and she talked her into it and was like, it's such an easy, you know. And no, Kellen, not like Bonnie McMurray. Um, different McMurray. Yeah, I, I, but before, or... Uh... Considering we were getting into the like the deeper side, of yeah. it, I was going to make a joke about the McMurray thing, but I was like, eh, yeah, let's, that's not too that's not right too. now. Yeah. Um. So if I I think that saying she went down there for that purpose does make sense. Mm -hmm. Getting talked into it while down there, maybe. Still doesn't totally explain Evangeline lying to Mrs. Takaro because she could have said she is on a date or she went to see a movie, or anything that was something other than a blatant lie. Yeah. Could have been, oh, she's just out right now. Still not a lie. She chose to lie and say that Amber was asleep, which I find odd. It almost, I, I have to wonder if that was a way of trying to make sure that Mrs. Takaro did not try to contact Amber. Mm -hmm. Next morning, she lies about when Amber went missing. Mm -hmm. Because we know that Amber didn't just disappear. We have we have reason to believe that she, you know, she was not running out in the middle of the night, that she was already out by 8 p.m. Um, and the reason to believe that is that there is a phone call that she made on August 18th, on the night of August 18th. I, and I, I'm a little confused about how this happened because the timing of the phone call, it's a 17-minute phone call. 
The timing of the phone call is that it started immediately when she was picked up by a hitchhiker. She was hitchhiking. And so she see the call starts basically the moment she gets into the car. The call was with her brother who was in jail. Mm -hmm. Everybody who commented on the video said you can't call into jails in Canada. That calls can only be made from the jail out. Interesting. I Personally, I was not aware of that. No. Yeah. But if that's the case, the timing is uncanny. Yeah. Because it's an exactly 17-minute phone call, and you'll understand why that number is important in a second if you haven't watched the video. Uh, but for those who have watched the video, obviously you know why 17 minutes is important. Um, on that phone call, she is basically arguing with the driver about where they're going. She says, yo, where are we by? And he says, we're, we're by Beaumont. Or, you know, we're headed this way and then a little bit later you can tell the phone call has been spliced yeah um but it was recorded because it was to a with a, somebody in a jail um so there's little splices here and there where you can tell they cut out either space or audio that wasn't directly related and then she says you know yo where are we going they have a little bit more of an argument we're headed east east you sure like yeah 50th street up into the town um and some people were like, oh, well, maybe she wasn't going to 50th Street. Maybe they were using 50th Street to get into Edmonton. There's, you know, there's an Ikea, like, sort of near 50th Street. And I was like, it was almost 9 p.m. Yeah. It, it, that doesn't make sense. Why do the shopping alone? Mm -hmm. Why not, like, you, there's, I understand why people are trying to, trying to come up with reasons for this. But yeah. I, I couldn't find a good reason she'd be going up 50th Street in Edmonton because it's, mainly residential industrial and like commercial in the sense of like what i said was dick sporting goods obviously i know there's not dick sporting goods in edmonton canada but like i was thinking of something you know local and close by but yeah. talking like big box you know stores like that um what we'd have in a mall so probably not leaving at 8 p.m to go get ikea furniture unlikely like it just Obviously, a ton of this is speculation, but Occam's Razor, that's probably not it. My thinking is that she, either somebody is correct, and she did get talked into, uh, for just to use the word prostitution, um, or my thinking is that maybe she met somebody and was invited out to, like, go to the bars, and then that person said, oh, well, you know, come to my place first, and we'll head out from there, um, and she being you know, trusting and, you know, hoping for something good to come out of this might have said, sure, why not? Mm -hmm. You know, I, Evangeline can watch my son. It's not a big deal. And it also doesn't involve, that, that does not, that tracks with her previous behavior, whereas uh, assuming prostitution does not, because mm -hmm. there's no evidence that she was ever involved in it from what I could tell. Yeah. So makes more sense that she would have thought, you know, that she was going on a date or something like that. And that's why she ended up getting kidnapped. Um, I'm not saying necessarily that the person who invited her out on a date is the person who coordinated the kidnapping. Another possibility that I've run across is that Evangeline was responsible for all of it. And that this entire thing was, you know, trafficking. Mm -hmm. That she convinced Amber to go down, convinced Amber to go out. Maybe that this was something... Because in my mind, when I think about it, I'm like, it would not at all be ridiculous for Evangeline, who just shows up in Fort McMurray. Because within the year, she's in Nova Scotia. Mm -hmm. So she's not like, she's not like grew up in Fort McMurray. She's just there for some reason. Yeah. And the things that if it is the person I think it was, because I found people who were arrested for stuff in Nova Scotia, uh, then it would be things like assault and theft and you know, legitimate crimes, not just petty mm -hmm. stuff. So what I wonder is, was Evangeline a plant who goes into vulnerable communities finds somebody develops a connection with them convinces them to go on a trip to the nearest big city and then has somebody there to meet them probably a you know pretty attractive you know man who's you know oh well i, I i'm so interested in your story and who you why don't we go out for drinks tonight okay doesn't have a car oh i'll just i'll just i'll hitchhike or something like that you know it's it's not unusual for native women to hitchhike in canada it's not an unusual thing. A lot of them don't have cars. Yeah, it's, a, it's an unfortunate <laughs> yeah. common or relatively common circumstance, but... Yeah, so not great. 
person says, all right, well, she's staying here to the third guy. Third guy's like, all right, I'll be there right at the proper time. Pick her up. She'll never be seen again. Mm -hmm. Then the question, of course, becomes, okay, well, why did what happened next happen? Which is that that phone call gets released in 2012 on August 28th. That is two years and 10 days since Amber went missing and they had had the phone call from the moment it concluded. So one thing I haven't really talked about as I've been going through this story, because I wanted to focus on some of the more speculative stuff that I can't say in the Friday videos, because it's conjecture. Yeah. Um, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police did not investigate this case. No, not even close. I mean, well, besides the fact that you couldn't get into any of your conjecture elements, I think you outlined that pretty clearly in yeah. the findings from the internal, essentially, investigation. Yeah, investigation which I think, I think we can skip to, because I think everybody understands where the story is going. Yeah. The findings from the civilian review of the RCMP's handling of this case uh, said a lot of things, but one of the most important ones was that the command failed to monitor Amber's case. Which, to, I read that as legal speak for did not investigate, yeah. because everything else contextually says Constable Redacted failed to do this, Corporal Redacted failed to do this, Constable Redacted failed to interview Miss Redacted in an appropriate amount of time, uh, Constable Redacted failed to order Corporal Redacted to, like, it. basically if you go through it point by point, the summary version of the the findings is... Nobody did their job. Yeah. So nobody actually looked for Amber. Uh, also in the video, I, as I say, you know, we've covered, we've covered the way that the Royal Canadian Mounted Police investigate before. And it really is them going somewhere going, ah, hmm, don't know. All right. Well, he must've walked off. Like, yeah, it's hop off their horses and they're like, you know, I don't see him. Do you wait? I'm not seeing anybody. Eh? Well, it's about time we head home then. Right. Like, <laughs> sorry. <Yeah. laughs> it's like, just, that's not an exaggeration. When they went to look for Bart Schleier, they got there, found his campsite, found that exactly one meal had been prepared and it wasn't even in the fire. Mm -hmm. It was just like a, a cold meal he had eaten. Nothing else had been done. Found his boat tied off across the lake and did not proceed to look for him. They no, were just like, uh, he probably walked home. Yeah, I was like, oh, he's probably out for a swim. Hey, well, the game's on at four, so... I believe it was like 15 <laughs> kilometers to the nearest road or something, yeah. which, you know, again, in real measurement units, that's not like too many miles, but yeah. in Canadian measurement units, it sounds a lot <laughs> longer. But, you yes. know, we're talking about like eight, nine miles. Yeah. Um, but that's still, you know, yeah, he's an avid outdoorsman and everything. It's not, you know, a hard hike for a guy like that, but... It's also not the most likely outcome. <laughs> no, also, like, with all of his provisions there. And he had been missing for two weeks, which means even if that is what he did, nobody had heard from him, so he was still missing. Exactly. Like, so that's how they investigated that. Uh, David uh, David Horsey and Fred Hardesty in 2005, which was not that long after this and in the same side of Canada, um, went missing up in the Northwest Territories near Nahani. And in their case, uh, they found the bodies after people literally were like, no, please keep looking. We're going, through, like, after private individuals came out to keep the search going, because yeah. the Canadian police were like, ah, I just don't know where they are. Yep. Like, um, and, and I get it, you know, it's, even in the United States, the FBI doesn't look for missing people, but the RCMP has it as part of their mission, so mm. they're supposed to do it. Yeah. Uh, I think it was David Horsey, um, who was the one that was found with burn marks on his forearms. Mm -hmm. Nobody tried to explain the burn marks. Also, there was no reason for them to be out of the cabin in the first place. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. what? <laughs> like, so that's why when I, when I constantly saw, you know, they're investigating, they're investigating, they're investigating. I'm like, they're not investigating. Mm -hmm. And the, the report says they're not investigating. So that call, that call is released immediately. Three people say it's Pat Carson. Um, who is a, a rancher who lives in Onaway, yeah. who is a registered sex offender, uh, invites people, like, post job listings for young women to come out and work at the ranch. And then he asks them for creepy stuff, like to have them pose nude for wood carvings. And yeah, gets, yeah, basically gets aggressive with them if they try to leave. It makes advances, all that. So there's websites out there that are like, hey, if you see these, don't do it. And a disturbing number of people 
who like in the chat or in the comments when that video went up were like, oh yeah, you know, my cousin was invited there or my sister was invited. Like, how much reach did he have? I like, don't know. Also, how many, why do so many people from Edmonton watch this show? <laughs> yes. Hi. Hi, but what? Why are you here? <laughs> we appreciate your presence, but we're, we're glad you're here. We're just confused. Yeah. <laughs> like, but yeah, also like on Lore Lodge that, Edmonton chapter. Well, on that board, so <laughs> you guys should find each other and have watch parties. That'd be fun, actually. Oh, that don't invite Pat Carson. Oh yeah, um, please don't. Uh, we're actually thinking about doing something live uh, at the very least next year. Mm -hmm. We might do something a little bit sooner, but uh, yeah, stay tuned. Yeah, but so. yeah, the, all the messages on that one board that they were coming in from like 2011, mm -hmm. 2012 ish area. So you found the same one as me. Exactly. Yeah, it was just like it was like how many it, it was just so many people of like oh yeah if this happens whatever it was like oh yeah I found this guy like a lot of people were coming to it being like oh yeah I like applied there. It's yeah. Like, how many listings did this guy put up that this many people are a applying mm -hmm. b going through that scenario and c coming to this board to talk about it like the distillation yep. of the amount of people that actually ended up there makes you wonder how many other people there are that had had interactions with that guy yeah it, the whole thing was like wild but the rcmp was like uh well we investigated and we don't think it's pat carson and my immediate response was okay they probably didn't investigate and there's a solid chance it's pat carson but then i went and i looked a little further and i thought about it and you know in covering these cases there have been times where we have in fact had to cover an actual murderer i've come to have a little bit more of an understanding of how profiling works mm. and why it why it works yeah because it does um, and I'm not saying racial profiling. I'm talking about criminal profiling. I realized that could get clicked and taken out of context, but I wanted to be clear that we're talking about criminal profiling. Yes. Missing 401, of course, is a case profile for victims as well. Yep. Um, so Carson Ranch, Onaway, Alberta, Canada, Northwest of Edmonton, invites people to the ranch, asks them for creepy things, so far as I know, not known to have killed anybody. Otherwise, I don't think he would be operating a ranch. There are a lot of people who are like, he's definitely killed people. But so far as I can tell, there's there's no proof he's killed anybody. So I'm going to refrain from calling the guy a murderer and just stick to calling him a creep. Yeah. Um, or sex offender. And a sex offender, yeah. Which, yeah, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They both are generally synonyms, but yeah. so legal. Everyone says it was probably Pat Carson. I'm not sure they would have said that had the next piece of evidence already been out, which is that a few days later, a couple of people riding horses in, through on a trail uh, through a, a big piece of farm property come across a skull off the trail. A few more bones are found. Coroner comes out. Dental records confirm it's Amber Takaro. That farmland was southeast of Edmonton. And her remains were found in a spot where, according to investigators, you'd have to be familiar with the area, like pretty familiar with the properties out there mm -hmm. to do something like that, to, to get her to that spot, um, which maybe somebody did just, you know, kind of stumble their way through the brush. But they also would have had to either lead Amber there or carry Amber there. And Amber was uh, not not a s small individual. Uh, I'm not trying to be mean, just would have been hard to carry her for 15 minutes walk onto a property and that was 15 minutes walk for people who weren't carrying a dead body yep so this is probably someone who knew the area and maybe even planned to put her there nobody could really explain why at the end of the call there's like you know somebody says gravel i think that's how i found the property is i was like where's there a gravel road off of an asphalt road mm -hmm. and also you know where is 17 minutes and where did they generally say she was found so i kind of triangulated it and i think it's near ord lake yeah. um which is in leduc county i couldn't find out for sure that seemed to be i don't know if they decided not to tell you the exact location so that people wouldn't go and sleuth it themselves which I kind of get in the immediate aftermath of an investigation, but 10 years on, man, like, you guys failed, let let us get to it. Yeah. Um, you know, I kind of think that maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea for there to be a law that, like, after a case has been cold for a certain number of years, the if somebody requests the information, it has to be given to them, mm -hmm. even like if it's still it. technically open. Yeah. Because if the police can't do it, then maybe the rest of us can. Um, you know, again... 
we we beat the Inquirer, and and we didn't have any connections, any resources. Not so, even close. Uh, you know that's and that's not to toot our own horns. That's to say, like the collective community out here could probably help. And with cases like this, where there's really no way that anybody's being hurt by it, um, yeah, yeah, what's the worst going to happen? And I'm sure that somebody's got a reason that shouldn't happen. Maybe you know, maybe I'm just you know speaking on my ass. It happens. Um, <laughs> we don't know everything. Exactly. Um, but they didn't just find Amber's remains there. They found remains of three other women who had gone missing between 2003 and 2008 within kilometers. That was the, the terminology used. So I didn't know the exact location of those bodies, but what I was thinking was, all right, it's a lot of farmland here. Body was found in a place where you'd probably have to be familiar with it. I'm thinking farm worker. Somebody who's maybe worked on a lot of these farms, a lot of these properties. All right, well, who are those people? And which of them were in the area between 2003 and 2008? And can we call them in? Can we ask them questions? Mm -hmm. uh, can we get their voices on audio? Can we see if they match? That's me sitting here as a YouTuber thinking, you know, based on cases I've seen before, here's some things I would have done. It's not that the RCMP tried those things and came up with nothing. It's that they didn't try them. Yeah. They did not try and triangulate those bodies to figure out if there was a central nexus. They did not interview Evangeline, at least not in 2010. Hmm. And nothing in the report says that they did eventually interview Evangeline. All that it is is that one finding says that one person didn't fail to try to interview Evangeline. Yeah. Evangeline was in police custody from at least October through December 2010 in Nova Scotia. Hmm. They could have flown down and interviewed Amber at any time, or not Amber, Evangeline at any time. Pretty easily, yeah. Pretty easily. They didn't. Um, interestingly, the... Uh, the Instagram account for the person I think this is, uh, which matches the picture put up by uh, either Billy Joe or Paul Takaro, who says this is the woman that my, that last saw my sister, matches this Evangeline. Uh, her last Instagram post is from 199 weeks ago. Last week, so 200 weeks ago. Really? Four years. Wow. Almost four years. Uh, which puts us back to 2019. Yeah. Um, there are reports from around then that discuss that a person with the same name being charged with assault and battery and theft so i'm wondering if the same person now she's in jail and that's why she hasn't said anything um or why nobody's why i haven't heard back from her after reaching out to be like hey just so you know people are saying this is you is this you and if it is do you have anything to say um i wasn't sure how to approach that message so i i did it in the most polite way i could which was this is being said if that's not you, I apologize, but if it is you, do you have any comments? Yeah, it's, I think it's a fair way to put it. I heard nothing back. Um, is what it is. Yep. Amber was never... Her, her case was never solved. It is still considered open, um, though it's pretty cold, because by the time they found her remains, it had been two years. There was nothing to tell cause of death. They ruled it a homicide, because obviously... Uh, but no cause of death. The question I have, because my running theory, until the part where she was found dead, where she was found dead, was that this was trafficking. But if it was trafficking, why'd she get killed and dumped on a farm? Yeah. That wouldn't really make sense. Um... Maybe she was trafficked for somebody so he could kill her, but that just doesn't... Seems a little odd, right? From from the M.O. of what trafficking generally seems to entail, Yeah, that doesn't quite fit. Yeah, I just... So I, I didn't buy the trafficking angle. The idea that she went down there to... Uh, to uh, I believe one YouTuber said sell her body. Um, the idea that she went down there to do that, possible, but not well supported... The idea that she was talked into doing it supported enough. It does explain why Evangeline would lie about where she was because Evangeline might have not been intelligent enough to be like, oh, she's out and panicked and been like, oh, she's asleep. 
thinking that it was going to be no big deal. Yeah. And then panicked in the morning when she wasn't there and told up and you know, came up with a new story. Yeah. Uh, that said, I think that the, the fact that Evangeline's testimony has never been made public is a crime in and of itself because there could be details in there where, like, listen, I, I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, you know, the experts looked into it and, you know, the, the, they're, they're expert investigators, right? The findings from the civilian report say not a single one of these people knew what they were doing. They weren't familiar with missing persons policy. They weren't familiar with investigative practices for missing persons policy. They weren't familiar with media correspondence for missing persons policy. Not a single one of these people is the experts. You and I know more about this than those people did. <laughs> and that is not an exaggeration. Our viewers probably know more about investigating missing persons cases than these Royal Canadian Mounts police officers did. Which is just sad. Yeah. The average girl who listens to a true crime podcast on her way to work every morning knows more about investigating missing persons cases than these canadian police officers that is not a joke it is not an exaggeration no like it's proven by an investigation yeah it's i i i, I encourage everybody to read the report uh if i remember i'll go grab a link to it and put it in the yeah in the description but it's just it's infuriating to read uh and you know you might be able to sit there and be like yeah well this is a this is a bad look this is a bad case but it's isolated. Yeah. First of all, three other bodies, not isolated. That's a serial killer right there. Until you tell, until you present me with evidence that that's, that these were actually all just one-off random killings, four Native American women all killed and thrown off the side of the road in the, well, not even thrown off the side of the road, like put deep into the woods to try and prevent them from being found all within kilometers of each other all within the same, you know, general cardinal direction from Edmonton. Until you prove to me otherwise, that's a serial killer. Mm -hmm. like, and even if it's not, it still should be investigated. Probably. Exactly. Um, and then we, but then, you know, you look at the rest of the statistics. It's something like uh, in 2016, there were five, hang on, I have them somewhere. Um, let me snag them. But. I did like Lila's comment just now of replace the RCMP with a mixture of true crime wine moms and tired psych majors. Oh, God. Yeah, probably. Um, Which would probably be an upgrade considering the findings that we found for this video. Wait. Did I open this? All How the hell did I end up all the way down there? Uh, hang on. My remarkable is being funky. Funky okay. fresh, as you might say. Um... <laughs> I love this thing, but every once in a while, I'm like, I, I really would like to just go to my most recent case, you know? Yeah. Nothing's perfect. Oh, wait, there's a go to page button. I'm stupid. So stupid. <laughs> uh, it's going to be probably like 350. Yeah, I have 359 pages of missing 411 notes. They all look like that. Um, also, also something to keep an eye out for. The hundreds of pages that we have might be doing something with them. Oh, yeah. Also, uh, for Tartaria, if you go look at... Um, okay, wait a second. Wait. Where the hell are the Amber Takaro notes? Oh, unsolved. I switched it over to a different... I'm stupid. Got it. Um, what I'm about dumb. the Tartaria one? Oh, all of the Tartaria notes are available on our Patreon for free. Nice. Not in typed form, but you can find them in a handwritten form. Yeah. So So you don't have to pay to see them. They're nope. just there. And while you're there, if you want to give us a dollar a month, go for it. <laughs> you don't have to. But Aiden is supposed to have a drunk folklore video up. Yeah, it's going up by the end of the month. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Forgot what we said. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, here we go. So, in 2016, this is for the United States, to be clear, uh, but the, the statistic, the, I'm gonna say something weird. The FBI is better at this than the RCMP. Um, Good job. The, the U.S. criminal justice system is better at MMIW than the Canadian one. Everybody, everybody's like, oh, those Americans, they did the natives real dirty. It's like, look north. <laughs> Not saying we did a good job, but... We did a it could have been job. worse. Yeah. yeah, you do have to decipher my scrawl, I will admit. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Um, once you figure it out, you figure it out. Except sometimes I don't even know what I wrote. And I've been... Also, you can see the change in my handwriting from the beginning of the Missing 411 notebook really? to the... Oh, yeah, I'll show you in a second. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, in 2016, this is for the U.S., 
there were 5,712 reports of missing Native American women. Mm -hmm. Aiden, do you, want, do you want to guess how many were recorded by the government? In America or can that, can in, in America. In 2016, how many the government actually recorded? Out of 5,100 and what was Out of 5,712. Lock in your guesses now, folks. 5,712. So I'm going I'm gonna to highball and say 500. You're going to say 500? Yeah. 10%? A little yeah. under 10%? Yeah. What yeah. do you think, chat? What do we think? Anybody have, have a guess for out of the... 5,700 reports of missing Native women in 2016. How many the government recorded? Somebody says 118. Uh, someone says 6. 50, 78, 50, 0, 0. <laughs> Jared, you're actually extremely correct. It's 116. Wow. You probably remembered that from the video. Yeah, <laughs> but true. yeah, it was 116 out of 5,712 the government recorded 116 of them. That's like genuinely disgraceful. Mm -hmm. And remember, Native American reservations, mm -hmm. sovereign territory, that is another country technically. Mm -hmm. The federal government should be the point of contact. But what you see is typically it's not the FBI. Mm -hmm. It's like fish and wildlife who end up being involved in investigations on Native territory because they're the only people that the Natives trust. I mean, I can't blame them on that, <laughs> like, to be fair. Like, so there's like, it's unless a federal, apparently unless a federal agency already has a reason to be operating on that territory, mm -hmm. such as Fish and Wildlife, who then can ask the FBI for help, the FBI does not just waltz in. And uh, until 2013, um, let me see, what was it? Uh see i think i have the exact yeah until 2013 native police could not prosecute non-natives so if somebody came onto a native american reservation committed a crime they could not be prosecuted they could not be extradited of all the things that have happened mm -hmm. in the native american and american governmental history mm -hmm. that seems particularly egregious yeah now I'm not totally sure if it applies to non-natives who live on reservation. I think they can prosecute that. I think they could prosecute them. I would hope. Um, but <laughs> until 2022, states could not prosecute for crimes committed on native land. So after 2013, the natives, the native police could go and say, this person committed a crime on our land. We need to prosecute them. And the state and local police would be like, okay. Or should be like, okay. Yeah. Not always the case. Of course. 2022, one part of the problem, and that was part of the problem, mm -hmm. was you would have the, the native police would say, hey, uh, this we believe this person committed a crime on the reservation. We need to come, we need you to arrest them and give them to us so we can try them. Local police and state police could just be like, no. So somebody could go onto a Native American reservation commit a crime, run back off the Native American reservation, and basically get away with it, as long as they didn't go back on res. In 2022, uh, they changed the laws again, so that now state and local police, I think definitely state, maybe local, state police can prosecute for crimes committed on non-Native land. So if you go onto the Native land and commit a crime and get away back onto, you know, say you're in Oklahoma, mm -hmm. back into Oklahoma, state police can still come arrest you for what you did, and they can prosecute you for yeah. what you did. Uh, again, still not a perfect system. There are still people on both sides who reject the help of the other, who refuse to help the other. There's problems. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of places too where the natives tell the feds and the police to stay out because they don't trust them. So a lot of people go, oh well, if they don't want our help, then you know what are we supposed to? It's like we we got to bridge. We got to work on the trust aspect first. Yeah. Like yeah, I understand. Yes, there's. There are there are nuances and there are criticisms to be had for for both sides of this issue, but the 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 solution isn't to say oh well you know there's just too many problems between the two of us can't do anything. It's to be like okay well how do we mend that? How how do we create trust again between these two groups of people? Because obviously we don't have a, a ton of no. trust right now. I uh, I think I hope from what I can tell it seems like you know. This kind of work, this kind of discussion is helping because there's it, it allows people to see that, yes, 
we can care and yes you can trust us not all not everybody is is out to do something bad here not everybody is not worthy of trust but that's going to take a while it's going to take more than a few content creators it's going to take laws it's going to take politicians actually getting up and saying this stuff and it would be nice if celebrities picked a worthwhile issue for once in their lives instead of focusing on whatever stupid pet problem they have like PETA. Do you get get it? Pet problem? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, like, yep, yeah, I got it. Um, yeah, the, every time I see somebody who, who bothers to fundraise for PETA instead of like literally anything else, it drives me insane. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, look, look into PETA. It's a disgusting company, uh, organization. Um, and, and also it's not like a, they're like, oh, we're a nonprofit. And it's like, well, yeah, but they also have a for-profit side where everybody actually gets paid. Got it. So, um. So the 501c is just basically bogus. Yeah. There's a 501c4 uh -huh. also. Um, so they're allowed to make money. Yeah. Uh, that's just the front. And by the way, this is how a ton of nonprofits all across America work is mm -hmm. that they, they're a nonprofit, but then all of that money gets run through yeah. another organization. So I, I don't understand it off the top of my head. I've just listened to a lot of people talk about it. So highly recommend looking into PETA, uh, especially if you consider them to be the good guys. Really any charity you consider donating to, don't donate anything until you've done your due diligence. Yeah, it's, um, and, you know, it, as far as organizations that work on stuff adjacent to this, Gabby Petito Foundation, I will always be willing to shout them out. We wanted to add a fundraiser to this video. There weren't any for missing murdered indigenous women. Uh, we didn't want to just put one on there. That's National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Um, so I might I might end up doing the Gabby Petito one because at least it's it's adjacent. Yeah, it's to help victims of like domestic violence and uh, women who are in bad situations where they feel unsafe. Mm -hmm. So at least that's something. Um, I'm also gonna try and lobby Google to add some MMIW charities because I was I was able to get Gabby's charity added. It wasn't on there, and I was able to be like, hey. Yeah, this needs to be here. Unfortunately, all of the Native American ones are just not listed. Even Google, YouTube gives you, <laughs> this is pissing me off. YouTube gives you if, you, if you want to donate to a charity and you don't see it, or you if you want to create a fundraiser mm -hmm. and you don't see the charity of your choice, it allows you to pick one, it allows you to search for them, it allows you to suggest that new ones be added. Mm -hmm. So their directory doesn't contain a single MMIW related charity. Or sorry, their directory their directory has four. Mm -hmm. Google doesn't have a single one of them. And if you go to add a fundraiser, because you're like, hey, you should add these people to your list, they won't allow you to add any of them. Yeah. Because they don't recognize that they exist. So I can't Google. Come on, guys. It's not hard. You'll you'll like you'll put up a graphic, mm -hmm. you know, for like random stuff like there'll be like some minor dutch painter from the 18th century and you'll put up a graphic for the anniversary of the time that they like made a painting but you won't actually support people in vulnerable positions you won't go out of your way to do something like this is something you can actually help people and also write it off your taxes and mm -hmm. instead this is what you do like just drives me insane rightfully so yeah as as it should but i uh, you know unfortunately there's there's no way to tell the, the end of the story of amber takaro because it's not over yet and whoever did it hasn't been caught but with that said it is eight o'clock so i think it's time to switch to super chats it is indeed time mental hedgehogs for two dollars and 59 cents love it congratulations <laughs> on 100 and here's to 100 more thank, thank you. you that was concerningly at the same time <laughs> Uh, Stephen Hoagland for $30, thank you very much, says, Finally catching one live. I've been binging your podcast for oh, several months you. and have been loving every moment. Keep up the good work. We well, will certainly you. try. Uh, I can promise decent work. Followed up with a $20 <laughs> one for also Windowsy and then a $10 one per milk. Appreciate it. Cursed series of words. Yeah. Do you want to talk about your, your chalky milk trials this oh, weekend? Yeah, I just wanted some chalky milk, man. We went to a diner on, what was it, Saturday, Saturday morning? Saturday morning. And we, got, we all got coffee, and, and he asked for some chocolate milk, like, three different times. No, I asked for chocolate milk, and they brought me coffee. Yeah. <laughs> I asked for chocolate milk, and they brought me water. And then finally, he asked for chocolate milk, and they brought it to me. To be fair, I was closer to the waiter, or the waitress, I should say. And I think it, she might have just been hard of hearing. I don't think I was talking quietly. 
Maybe you just weren't talking loudly. True, true, perhaps. <laughs> Mayhap. Perchance. Perchance. Spoon for four ninety nine says five dollar hala. Thank you, Spoon. Thank you very much. A and B for nineteen ninety nine says always look forward to more of the Aidens. Thank you. Yeah, well, there won't be any more of us. I think there's only two for now. For now, yeah, we may, might need a, another Aiden. Good. I, I know some. I do. We're actually gonna have uh, one on the show. I mean, do that. He's uh, in a band. They had an album called Skinwalker. Oh, yeah. fun. Free Aidens, that'll be fun. Yeah, it's Aiden DeAngelis. Briley also, D. check out the band Contracts. They're our friends. Go for it. Briley B for $5 says, I was lucky enough tonight to catch another live. I usually work on Sunday nights, so this was a treat. Happy 100th episode, guys. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Kellen, the official data for $5.56. Love that in particular. Says, Fedosi. Fedosi, that's that is, you. That is an amazing... We might have to change your name somewhere to that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find a way. We'll find a way. Life uh, finds a way. Uh, life, uh, we, we, could, we could make a t-shirt that says, May, <laughs> have you talked with your Fedosi? Because, you know, everybody has a federal agent. Yeah. We just know ours. Which is great. Yeah. I'll never not enjoy <laughs> that. I love that. Uh, Richard Henderson for $4.99 says, here's some money to celebrate 100 Proud of you guys. Been here since the Mothman video and can't wait to see what the future holds. Been here a while. Yeah, thank you thank for you. sticking with us, and we can't wait either. Moth mussy. I saw a lot of Mothman t-shirts yeah. the other day, yeah. Agamemnon, Jim we, Bag. We gotta, have a, we gotta have a table next yeah, yeah, year. Yeah, we want to just say that's yeah, our plan. Yeah, so uh, where we live, there's a thing called Blob Fest, which if you've seen the movie The Blob, uh, it's that. Um, because the theater on Bridge Street here mm. is the one where they shot the scene of all of those people running out of the movie theater with yes. the Blob behind them. Yep. So every year we have a Blob Fest which is a weekend that is just all blob themed. Yep. And, but there you also get some other, like you, you get everything from people just doing regular vending to people doing more like cryptid themed monster themed stuff. Yep. So we were talking about it and next year. We're going to have a table there, which means that uh, sometime in July, we will recommend that all of you come visit Phoenixville. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's a very fun time. Uh, a lot of the bars have blob themed drinks, which yeah. is fun. Not all of them, but a lot of them. But and, there are a lot of bars. Yeah, there are a lot of bars. I literally so there were two things. One, when uh, when Cat and I were getting lunch, mm -hmm. we, we somebody asked the question. I wonder who like the person from the furthest away place is. And I was mm -hmm. like, wouldn't it be sweet if there's like someone from Alaska here? We went down by the Colonial. Mm -hmm. They had a map that said, "Take a pin and tell us where mm -hmm. you're from." There was somebody from Col Alaska here. <laughs> I sh I'm not I kidding you. Like the, the, from all over the country, it was really cool to see. But mm -hmm. just like. The fact that someone from Alaska came in for that's great. So that's the fun part is it wouldn't just be for us. There's a whole festival that you can enjoy, and we figured it'd be a good time to do it. Sure. Agamemnon's Jim Bag for $2 says, which is worse, Canada or Ohio? Oh, Ohio, absolutely. Yeah, 100%. I mean, unless there's a war, in which case Canada. Fair. I, I, I will stand by my Ohioan brothers if we must fight the Canadians. Correct, yes. I mean, I can't leave them to the dreaded charge of the winged hussars on mooses. <laughs> Fair. The winged musasar. The, the winged musar. The winged musar. Love it. <laughs> Scarlet Edwards for one ninety nine said, "Have y'all looked into the moonlight tours?" I've heard the term. It came up a lot while I was researching. Uh, I did not get a chance to look deeply into it, but I've heard the term enough that I will be. Fair enough. Cole twenty four for two dollars says, "The new season of Dexter also touched on MMIW as well." The new season of Dexter. Oh, you didn't hear about that? No. Oh, they revived it. Oh, I gotta go watch Dexter now, I guess. Oh yeah. I didn't. I didn't know that they brought it back. Oh yeah. Also, I, I've been wa I've been branching out and watching less uh, Netflix, HBO, Amazon Prime stuff, mm -hmm. and more network TV, just because mm -hmm. I've kind of run out of. Understandable. Yeah. yeah. Um. And like most of the stuff I was watching on those channels was like you know House and like Nightfall and yeah last kingdom like like shows that were basically shot like movies yeah in terms of the the style and like the quality yeah. i've been re-exposed to non-sitcom network television and i don't like it mm. <clears throat> the cinematography is so uncomfy i am not a fan oh no it's weird because it's i think the cinematography in a lot of shows got worse mm -hmm. because primetime shows in it the feels early... like season 10 supernatural yeah prime which time... it was from around the same i'm talking about the strain specifically yeah, yeah, a yeah. tv show about three boy well but if you look at primetime shows in the early 2000s like house mm -hmm. lost uh even oh, like yeah, the right. mentalist or whatever they were all primetime network tv but they were done really well yeah i think there's just so much of it now yeah 
that people don't either have the time or the money yeah. and to be was, able to really break it FX in. Too, so, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's I think that's what bugs me is it's like it's like watching It's Always Sunny, but it's a horror show. <laughs> but even a show I've never watched a ton of, but Justified on FX was pretty solid. Interesting. I I've only seen Didn't whitest kids it? you know have a show on FX at one point. I wouldn't be shocked. I think they did. They probably did. Rip rip uh, Trevor Moore. Rip. Uh, you too much. <laughs> Uh, T.L. Lancaster for $5 says, I just got a new job for more money and a promotion. Woo! Well done. Congratulations. Uh, brings me even deeper into Florida than I already am. I am afraid. Ah. You'll be fine. Ah. Just okay. avoid the skunky. Yeah, just avoid any towers for bats. And also most most of the population yeah. of Florida, I think. Whether they be human or swamp creatures, or a mix Florida of man, there's a reason that Florida has no no cryptids, and it's Florida man. Yes, it's because the humans are the cryptids. Yeah. Uh, John get bent for Canadian four dollars says congrats on a hundred episodes from Edmonton. Love what it. What did John do? <laughs> Why does he need to get bent? I don't know. I don't know if I want to find out. <laughs> New movie. <laughs> remake of John Tucker must die. Oh John Tucker gets bent. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Brutal. Amazing. <laughs> Canadian Jesus for Canadian $5 says, as a Mohawk person, I really appreciate you guys shining a light on this issue throughout your online careers, even from before y'all blew up on YouTube. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's it's something... Yeah, it's it's an important cause. It We have a platform. It's the right thing to do. Yeah. Enough said. And it fits with what we talk about. Yeah, that also helps. David Bucky for five dollars says the Jack family case similar to uh, similar bad RCMP work also the close uh, also and close to the highway a whole family disappeared. Oh, got it. All right, that's going to be one I have to look into. I yes, guess. good to know. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Thomas for Canadian ten dollars. Talk about the red woman from Oshawa, uh, Ontario. She appeared out of nowhere, stabbed a guy, and disappeared without a trace. It happened in front of several dozen people. Also, the guy survived the stabbing. Sounds somewhat similar to the Slender Man thing, but like slightly more intense. Yeah, just weird. You want to add that to the content sheet? Yep. And I'll, I'll look at what the next uh, question is. Red Woman of Oshawa, yeah. Red Woman of Oshawa. All right. Uh, oh, oh boy, it skipped. It skipped. Where'd it go? Here we go. Uh, Norberto Rodriguez Jr. for five said, WTF is going on here. Where's the mad surveillance state when you need them to do their effing job? Yeah, exactly. It's like, I paid for the surveillance state. I should be able to use the surveillance state. You would think. I didn't even want it. You forced me to buy it, and now you're not giving me anything from it? Come on, guys. Like, what, what was the point? What's the point of Big Brother if I can't use it for my benefit? Exactly. Or someone else's in terms of an investigation of the crime department or whatever. Yeah. Uh, the Sky King 5 for Canadian $5. Love the name. Uh, as a Canadian, I can say that the RCMP's ability to investigate missing persons cases are better than the authoritarian regimes and no one else. Yeah, basically. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that's, I mean, it, the authoritarian regimes are probably better at finding people they actually want to find. Yeah. Like, I, I can't tell. With the Canadians, with the, the RCMP, I really can't tell whether it's incompetence or malice. And I, th I think it just might be a mixture. Yeah, I think it's a mix. It's it's malice that has led to incompetence. I think so. Christine Pianem, Christine Piambino Bennett for 1999. Also, your mom. Hi. Uh, commercial break. Tell us about your T-shirt. Oh yeah. So this right here says uh, Vinny Paolizzi, and if you look at the the, the back of the shirt, it, it's the same design, just bigger. Um, Vinny Paolizzi is my cousin, and mm. he is a musician who uh, works out of Nashville. And he is, uh, I, don't, I don't know exactly how to describe his genre properly. It's kind mm -hmm. of a folksy, bluegrass, country kind of medley. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know exactly how he'd describe it, but that's kind of how I've been describing it to people. Uh, he's on Spotify, Vinnie Pay Lizzie. Uh, the, uh, Gold Rush is, I think, one of, my, one of his best songs, mm -hmm. um, if you want to check him out. Uh, I'm sure he'd really appreciate it. And mm -hmm. he's a genuinely, genuinely talented guy. Um, really unique songwriter, too. So I, I cannot, I, I'm so proud of the guy for how, how far he's come. So I um, have to, have to do a shout out for that. Thanks mom. Nice. Cakes for 499 says currently about a halfway through the new mission impossible right now. Wanted to stop in and say, hi, this movie is really, really good. Oh, I mean, I want to see it. Shockingly. I enough, need to watch the mission impossible series from the beginning though. Cause I've only seen ghost protocol. I haven't seen any of them. All right. I know what we're doing this week, right? <laughs> Uh, Kai Jones. For you one... know what we should do? What? We should marathon them in the theater. Oh, that'd yeah. be fun. That'd be fun. Mission Probably. Impossible theme bar crawl afterwards. That sounds fun. 
Probably not this week. Well, wait. Okay, so here's the problem. is We need to... Because this week's going to be relatively busy, but next week we have to do Barbie Oppenheimer. True. Barbenheimer. Barbenheimer. Uh, we had an, a discussion... Do you want to tell them about your psychopathic idea? I know people are going to disagree with me here. You utterly insane fool. Listen. Let me, let me, let me say my words. Aren't you baby... Everybody's talking about the order in which you watch it. You done? Okay. <laughs> there was a. There was. Oh, he's not done. There was. Just keep on going. Good boy. That's enough. That's that's a good puppy. You did well. <laughs> you did great. You good did job. Well. Good job. That was the cutest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, I, <laughs> I love him doing it without prompting. Yeah, exactly. He just hears the siren. He's like, I must sing the song of my people. Yes. Yeah, but tell them tell them how you want to do Barbie Oppenheimer. Okay, so think, think about it for a second, right? We all go to Barbie to really think about humanity. And Oppenheimer for the laughs. No, I'm kidding. Uh, no, I want to do Barbie first because I think it'd be fun. It'd be good to just like maybe pregame mm -hmm. a little bit at a bar, roll into that. And then as the wave dies down, you go into Oppenheimer with like, oh, that's really great or whatever. And then you just kind of sit there and think about humanity and the state of everything. I think we add all quiet on the Western front on top, just cap off the night. <laughs> the Industrial Revolution and its consequences have been a detriment to human society. Yeah, no, that's what I want to do. I want to leave the theater and really just let Oppenheimer resonate. Uh, but I guess I'm a psycho for that. Uh, yeah. That was everybody's conclusion. Not everybody. Anna agreed with me. Oh, my God. Fine. I got one person on my side. Fine. I think I think it'll be better. Because, I mean, that's, that's what you really want that to sit with you. Uh-huh. I do. Okay. <laughs> Incredible. Uh, what else we got? Kai Jones for one ninety nine pounds. Lore Lodge Welsh. I uh, partially. Yeah. Less than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, my heritage. Incredible. I gotta take the other two tests now to uh, figure out if they were legit. Uh, all right. What do we got next? What is an average TED moment? I do, no idea. TED. Wait, where did you see that? And then someone said, Ted, it's Ted. A Ted, like, Ted Talks? Oh, no, you did the Ted Kaczynski quote. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dummy. Fair. Fool. Um, I, I'm glad that so many people are agreeing with me about the order in which to see Barbie and Oppenheimer. That makes they're me very insane. happy. They're crazy. <laughs> anyway, Agamemnon's gym bag for $10 says, I'm left to assume that Google is against helping with MMIW. I wouldn't necessarily say against, but apathetic is definitely a term. <laughs> yeah. They may just, like, have not thought about it, which I'm going to hope. I don't think they haven't thought about it, because, let's be realistic, YouTube is utterly up their own ass with, mm. like, diversity initiatives. Yeah, that's fair. Like, to the point where it's it's actually, like, too much. And, and it starts to be like, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah that's fair. Okay. <laughs> like, Oh, I had a thought. Just in terms of Barbie and Oppenheimer, considering so many people are, you know, mentioning that they think that's a good idea. Whether the, you see it in that order or the other one, um, I think by, not next week, but the or this week, but the following week, after we've gotten a chance to see it, I think it'd be fun to uh, see what everybody thinks. Mm -hmm. So, and whether it's in Discord you, you or something should, like that. You should pet him. Maybe. He, he was looking at you expectantly. There so, we go. All right, what's next? Next is Dan Lopez for $5 and saying, what if she just planned to make some money that night and spend the day with her kid in the city? Uh, if I make some money that night, you need you mean prostitution, then that, we, I, I just don't think it's, it doesn't seem likely to me. Yeah. I'm not saying it's impossible. I just, I personally don't find it likely. Fair. Hacksaw Christie for $10 says, another cursed word, a dosi. Yeah, that's cursed. Yeah, not the first time we've heard it, though, I will say. We've heard, we've gotten some cursed things in this chat over the last two years. 
Ryan Whitcup for $10.07. Love it. Thank you, boys, for 100 Love all the shows that you do, and I'm always excited to see the next one. Thank you for all you guys do and for all you will do. A little, uh, little more than I usually do, but it's a special day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Also, somebody in chat did say that what? I should be careful about the, the diversity thing. I'm not saying that, like, you know, that it's that diversity is bad. I'm saying that when you constantly tell everybody how much you care about diversity, only to do absolutely nothing to help with real issues, mm -hmm. it just makes you look really bad. Like, because then it's just, it's pure virtue signaling. Mm -hmm. And the fact that there's, like, not a single one. Yeah. Like, ugh, not a single charity even remotely directed to this like that, that you have on your platform come on guys yeah like if you're going to care about diversity care about diversity don't just talk out your ass and like tell everybody else to care while you do nothing i think that's fair uh jumping in hang on uh stephen howland for ten dollars says thanks for pronouncing my name right i hope i did it again that time Girk roleplay for 1776. Can't give much, but I'm glad I'm here and at all, or I'm glad I'm here at all, uh, and that I've been here for this wild ride. Also, praise the milk god, Kaiser President Emperor Archibald. Yes. Hail. <laughs> he just looks like, can I go dead dead? Yeah, he just looks vaguely concerned. Uh, killing the official data for 556. Five, Love it. Thank you. Uh, I said Miss McMurray and Winona Earp, same actress, is hotter than Bonnie McMurray. <laughs> well, considering we're still letting the paint dry on that one, I'm going to have to agree with you. Wait, what? What? Mrs. McMurray. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. All yes. right. Got it. <laughs> yes. Uh, Blacksmith224 for $10 says, Have you considered looking into Japanese yokai? I've recommended looking into the, uh, un Umibozu? Seems right up your Umibozu, alley. Umibozu, I think, yeah. Uh, yeah, I haven't done a ton of the Japanese ones, but I could definitely get into some. Fair. Uh, Fandomaniacs for $10 says, Happy 100th, boys! Thank Would you, you guys ever look into some of the weird tales from Utah, like the Bear Lake Monster and that time they tried to put a whale in the Great Salt Lake? Yes. They... They what? Apparently, I guess they didn't recognize that the salt lake and the ocean don't have the same salt, salt content. content. Yeah. I don't even think, like, vertical... I just don't understand. Point. Yeah, like, what would the point of having a whale in it be? Just for tourism, a single whale? Be a sad whale. Yeah, extremely. <laughs> I assume this was a long time ago. I hope. Because if it was like 1980, I'm going to be really upset with some people. Yeah. Uh, Stephen Howland for $10 says, I must have the awu. You did get it. You got the awu. And you got it without prompting. He just did it. Yeah. I, I heard the siren. I was like, ah, come here. Yeah, yeah, I know yeah. you're going to do the thing. Yep, yep. Aren't you a good boy? You're a very predictable creature. Mm -hmm. At least you're loved. Oh, yes. He's having a good time. He knows he's loved. He's uh, a good boy. Scarlet Edwards for 199 says, Thank you for covering this. I have MMIW in my family. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, terribly sorry to hear that. But yeah, we're we're glad to be able to have a platform where we can cover it properly and to continue to try and draw attention to the things like this. Yes. Laura Townsend for 1999. Thank you. I saw you sent a second one. Did you were you trying to send a message with it? Because if you were, just just type it in the regular chat and we'll keep an eye out for it. I yeah. otherwise thank you but i just want to make sure that if you're trying to trying to get us to answer a question for you that we actually do get to answer the question so yeah guys if, in chat if you see if you see it from yeah. Laura, let us know uh ludicolo for five dollars says i know i asked the other day about the aztec mayan mythos there is a game coming out that might be interesting it's called uh mitlin an ancient mythical tale mitlan mitlan Ooh. is that is that the video game because I think I might know what you're talking about. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, he said it's a game. The one where you out. fight against conquistadors. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Nurbez Rodriguez Jr. for $2 says, Is it bad to say humans won't be missed if it ends? Huh? Is it bad to say humans won't be missed if it ends? Like the world? I mean, it depends on who's doing the missing, I guess. I, I mean, I don't think that nature would really... I, I don't think nature really cares. 
<laughs> oh, wait, the next one. What? Oppenheimer is banned in Japan because they already watched it. Oh. Terrible. Terrible. I was surprised it took it them this long to ban it in Japan. Is it actually banned? I believe it's actually banned in Japan. I, I get it. Why? The whole movie's about Oppenheimer's essentially regret of doing it. And the weight of the choices that led up to it and the yeah. you know, the the problems that it caused. If anything, that should be like validation for Japan. Maybe. I can still kinda of understand why you wouldn't want to watch yeah, it. Fair. Why you would be like, you know, we're we're not gonna glorify this guy in any way. Well, they don't show that, do they? I don't know. I haven't seen the movie. Huh. <laughs> Yet. Uh, same person, Ludicolo, for $10. Says, I've heard people talking about the Windowsy. Where can I get some? <laughs> Time to go searching. Also, is there a skin walker? I would, I would go that more with skin wussy, actually, of those yeah. two. Um, but don't, I... Don't go searching unless you've got a blue snow shovel, for one. Yeah. Um, we, we, our, our policy as a company is not to tell people where to look for the Windowsy. Nope. You may seek it yourself, but we will not guide you there. Oh, in quotes. I, I guide others to a treasure I cannot possess. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Incredible. Uh, I did see uh, someone in here, uh, oh, his Gurk roleplay, in quotes, says, Oppenheimer has not been confirmed in Jap uh, Japan for release, but it hasn't been banned. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Incredible. So it's in limbo. Godzilla minus one. Godzilla minus one. <laughs> All right, what do we got next? Uh, that's it for Super Chats. It is? Yeah. Nice. For the moment. All right. Yeah, did, we were... Laura, did Laura confirm? I haven't seen anything. Well, in that case, I mean, thank you for the $40. Yeah, thanks. That so much. was very kind of you. Very kind indeed. Um, and John Asturias, we did talk about the High Wave Tears. Uh, we got there and we, we talked about it in the last video as well. I'll see if I can do a bit more of an in-depth video at some point, but I just need to make sure that there's enough information out there to make it a full video mm -hmm. otherwise it'll probably end up being like a short or something like that yep um learn to pronounce utah names like wasatch you mean wasatch i've had i've I, been trying i've been to wasatch yeah and they've they've had there's so wasat wasatch it's either wasatch or wasatch i feel People like i pronounced it wasatch in or wasatch in the I, I think i said wasatch yeah in the video on I uh, maybe it was Garrett Barnsley. Maybe it's Wasatch that they want you to say. Maybe. Also, people got really upset about the way I pronounced Mount. Uh, apparently, it's Shasta. And apparently, and I said Shasta. We've been saying Mount Shasta for. Which to look at it, like, to me, it looks like Shasta. It's not my fart. <laughs> not my fault. The dialect. <laughs> Laura finally said, for nineteen and nine, she's like, I don't mind over contributing. I did fifty for a band <laughs> chat. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you incredible take incredible mindset we love it laura thank you uh say say that looks like it's probably just tool but it's probably gonna end up being something stupid like tooly and where also by the way um stephen ha uh howland make let me know if i did get it right now or if i said it differently earlier and got it right then uh she said yes check comments comments Oh, comments on the video? Yeah, so we're going to have to go to... Okay. Uh, for now, John Asturias for $5 says, The Bohemian Club Eats Kids. Thanks for the great video. <laughs> <laughs> we recommend watching our video on the Bohemian yeah. Grove. I don't think they're eating kids. They're definitely weird, though. Yeah. <laughs> There's a weird situation you going on. You just have to there. remember that hyper-rich people are generally just like... A little old, odd, you old, know? They're just old nerds. That's it. Uh, if you wonder what they're geez, doing or why they're doing it, comments, but I'm not seeing. It's what an old nerd would do. And I mean I that in the, the I mean that in the role play way, and I mean that in the why do you think they want so much money way. I'm trying. Fishbowl family for one ninety nine is asking you: Will you debate any people about cryptids? Ah, uh, I mean, I I could. I, I'm not sure what the debate would be. But if you guys have ideas and you have people you'd like us to have discussions with, you can absolutely tell us and we'll look into it. Um, right now, I'm just trying to find Laura's Laura's comment. She said check comments, but I'm not seeing any comments on the video. Laura, do you mean chat? Because if it's in chat, we didn't see it. We looked for it, though. Yeah. Uh, Hacksaw Christie for $5 says, well, uh, have you guys ever had a Rip It energy drink before? 
I don't think I have. Never even heard of it, to be honest with you. Yeah, no, that's that's foreign to me. Briley B for two dollars says, "Just a donation. Have a good day." Well, thank, thank you. you. Girk Roleplay says, "Say, Koi Kendall, please." Huh? Koi Kendall? Where? Right here. I would guess Kai Kendall. Kai Kendall. <laughs> Guy Kendall. Guy Kendall. <laughs> Kai Kendall. I, 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 it could be Kukendall, though, because it's Kukul. Ah, be maybe. Yeah, yeah. Kukendall, yeah. Uh, Stephen Howland uh, got it right the first time. Well, how did I say it earlier? You said uh, Ho- Hogland, I think. Hogland? Well, now I just feel disappointed in myself. Um, Laura Townsend for 1999. There we go. Uh, number one, don't watch TV during the strike. Fair. Number two, as uh, as Even watch the killing... That- came out a decade ago i think it's more in particular like don't give because the whole thing is against the streaming services oh, they and get the production company Got it. yeah i so. wasn't sure what was going on with the yeah. strike. just continue to watch youtube <laughs> considering i really don't have much time to watch anything lately <laughs> fair uh as watching the killing is uh as a what as as it, a watch the killing as watch the killing it has a reservation not sure about the grammar on that one I'm trying to understand what the question was. As a Shoshone Paiute. Paiute, thank you. Well, thank you. But I'm trying to figure out what number two is still. As Watch the Killing. It has a reservation. I'm assuming you're saying. Are you trying to say Watch the Movie, The Killing? It has a reservation? I think it's a show. A show? Yeah. Okay. Uh, But yeah, fair enough. Uh, Ludi Kohler for five dollars says, "Debate the benefits of getting Wendigussy with Wendigoon." Because yes, he's still upset that I accidentally coined the term Wendigussy. Why? As if it wasn't gonna happen. <laughs> it might as well be you if it's gonna be anybody. It's Tuila, apparently. Tuila. Tuila. Tu- the one we thought was Tuli is Tuila. Interesting. Interesting. Sheesh. Scarlet Edwards for one and says says, Shoshone Palti represent. Paiute. Paiute. Sorry. Paiute. Sorry. You spend a lot more time <laughs> reading stuff than I do. And even I get it wrong a lot of the time. Yeah. Paiute? Uh, Hoagland, he said. Hoagland. Okay, cool. It's not how you pronounce Paiute, to be clear. Fair. Dirty Kraut 04. <laughs> Keep up the good work. Thank you. <laughs> Hope I don't get in trouble with you two for saying Dirty Kraut. Um, Fair. Uh, I... Hoagland. Okay, cool. <laughs> I will remember next time. I'm guessing that I, I know the first one is Lester, right? From Molten Amber, eighty-five. Uh, Isn't uh, it Lester? It's not Leicester. I thought it was like Leicester. Might be Leicester. Leicester and that that one I would guess is Lemster. Lo- I was gonna say Lom- Lominster. Mm. Lomster. Yeah. <laughs> For growing up in an area that was intentionally named a lot of English, old English and Welsh names. Yeah. You'd think we'd be better. <laughs> right, yeah, we're Berwyn, Euclid, yep. Gladwin. Yep. Bryn Mawr. Bryn... <laughs> like, not used to these English words, okay? <laughs> From a different part of the world. Yes. Um, all right. Pirate during the strike. We cannot tell people to do that. We oh, cannot boy. directly tell you to go visit any particular there's, bays. There's plenty there are plenty of YouTubers who I'm sure would love the view hours. Yes. If you feel like if you're not if you're not going to watch TV during the strike then there's a lot of uh, a lot of YouTubers who would love the view hours. Axel Christy for $2 says Lore Lodge Blob Pub Crawl next year? Why not? Sure, might as well. And Gurk Roleplay, this will be the last one we take I think. It says yes. uh, it's pronounced Kirkendall. Interesting. I just think it shouldn't be <laughs> i mean fair <laughs> based on that spelling it should not be that um all right well App- appalachia fed yeah. hosting <laughs> all right well last thing i want to say tonight um because google would not give us any mm-hmm. i found some organizations that you can either donate to or find resources from who are dedicated to the missing and murdered indigenous women and phenomenon so those are all linked under the friday video from this and i'll also i'll try to remember to put them under in the description as well so you can see all of that under there and we got one more that we'll take just because it just came through uh but yeah so if you want to help those are the ways to do it i also would highly recommend uh 
donating to the Gabby, T Gabby Petito Foundation or to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Both of those groups do good work and they are, you know, adjacent to this as well. So those would be my recommendations. And I, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's what I have to say about that, but we'll cool. take these last two. Cool. Uh, John Asturias for $20, sorry, said, what do you guys think is going on in the national parks? <laughs> well, we're going to have to bring you back to day one on that one. Yeah. Uh, hang on. My, um, I'm going with the old Squatch. My scout platoon saw slash heard a Squatch in Afghanistan back in 2012. It was whooping at us and scared the hell out of all of us. Interesting. Send us an email. Yeah, send us an email with that story because I'd be curious to, to know more because um, that, that lines up with the story about the, the giant in the cave that mm -hmm. has been told that everybody says is fake but yeah. may or may not be. Yeah. Um, I haven't done research into any of the actual records from what that unit was doing, nor will I probably have access. So yes. uh, we've we've talked about the parks a lot our our video on missing 411 the hour and a half long one that we put out recently i think goes into detail on you know kind of where you need to start with with the actual disappearances the stuff that isn't you know kind of lacking context yeah. um personally i think that there i don't think that anything any one thing supernatural is responsible for the missing more form one disappearances at this point. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's just too much variance. They are not as similar as they often seem to be. So I would say that I don't think that there's any one answer to that question, but there are times where I've been like, it's very odd that they did things this way. Uh, that they made these choices in how they did the investigation. Um, so I, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to sit here and rule out the possibility that, some of these cases have been like feral people. Mm -hmm. uh, but, and when I say feral people, I mean, you know, people have been living off away from organized society for so long that they're no longer, they no longer behave the way that organized society does. Um, not that I'm saying that there's like, you know, feral cannibal communities out in the woods. Mm -hmm. Just there are, there are spots where you, every once in a while, someone will come across like a really isolated group and they're like, oh, How'd you get here? And there have been, you know, there was a guy that was found living up in the mountains uh, who had been up there since the Civil War, hmm. like back in the 1880s. Yeah. It was like impressive. Yeah. Last one one's from uh, Laura Townsend from 1999 says, my bad typing is eating into my lore lodge budget. Uh, go watch the killing. It is involves a Washington state reservation and an Al uh, a Shoni, uh pilot. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Yes. <laughs> Cool. Thank you for for all of the super chats, yeah, and much appreciated. I will take a look at it. Um, one of my favorite movies is is Wind River, which is same. Yeah, takes place on a uh, a uh, God. It's um, I want to say Arapaho. I think it's Arapaho. It's in Wyoming. Yeah. So I'm not sure. I feel like it's Arapaho. I might be wrong. Anyway um that's that's another vixen doe said just thank you for keeping the mmiw consciousness anything that helps thank you you yeah, know seriously means it, a lot it takes everybody to be able to keep it in the consciousness and yeah and we'll we're doing our best to try and find organizations i reached out to a bunch of them but it's it's really disorganized um the the or the the groups that are trying to help get information out there are pretty disparate and a lot of them have different resources and it's hard to find anything central to donate to one thing yeah. um so there's a lot of smaller groups you can donate to a lot of smaller groups you can support but all right that's it for tonight thank you guys gonna ryan just thank you i saw that last one thank you guys so much and we will see you on the next one bye guys <laughs>